The Hitman franchise and Agent 47 have quietly endured for almost 20 years now, with its inception back in the year 2000. With codename 47, this bald assassin has only gone from strength to strength with each entry. There have been a few stumbles along the way, with Hitman Absolution being a weird standout, and the third game, well that was just put out to keep the investors happy. But each time IO Interactive learned from these bumps in the road, despite Agent 47 looking like one of the most blandest characters in history, this silent assassin has taken on a life of his own, going from a cold hearted killer that can be just slapped on the front of a box to a comical genius. And this is why Agent 47 has stuck around so long. Yes, it could use fiber wire to kill its targets or an exploding rubber duck. There's something here for everyone. But what's behind the cold exterior and what does the barcode really mean? For that, we'll have to take a deep dive back into the franchise's history to truly understand video games' most notorious killer. I'm Ben Roy from WhatCulture.com and this is Hitman, the dark past of Agent 47 Explained. Agent 47 is the perfect killer machine because he was built to do that. Yes, this master assassin was bred to take out high-end targets, but whoever paid the most? This wasn't just your standard human though. Agent 47 was genetically enhanced to become the best, but it wasn't by any means the first of his kind, as his number should indicate. Agent 47 was the 47th in a long line of failed cancelled experiments, and we know this thanks to the barcode on the back of his head. Agent 47 was created on the 5th of September 1964, 6405090401 This number is tattooed on the back of his head. 640509 is the actual date of his creation, 04 marks that he is part of series 4, whilst 01 marks that he is the first of series 4, and 47 well that means he's the 47th overall. It is in plain sight and kind of fits 47, as he is well always hiding in plain sight. The experiments took place over the 60s and 70s in secret, at an asylum based in Romania. The asylum aspect of course was a cover up, as the mental institute was used by Dr. Otto Wolfgang Ottmeyer, who led the cloning program and essentially made 47. But his creation process was more elaborate than most come to believe. Otto Wolfgang Ottmeyer was in fact one of the five fathers, the group of men who came together in the mid 1950s after serving in the French Foreign Legion together. At the time, they grew an unbreakable bond. They were all from different nationalities and backgrounds, something that might have seemed surface level, but was actually the key to 47's success. This because Dr. Ottmeyer and the four other men are essentially Agent 47's biological fathers. Yes, they believed that the combination of so many different nationalities would become the key to perfection. Their blood came together to create the perfect killer. In payment for their DNA, Dr. Ottmeyer gave the four men fresh organs from cancelled clones. This meant that they looked unnaturally young way into their later years. Though this group with the motto blood and muscle grew impatient of Ottmeyer, fresh organs were no longer enough and they wanted their share of the clones. This in turn led to Ottmeyer releasing Agent 47 into the wild. From here, 47 would join the International Contract Agency, or ICA for short, and was soon contracted by a mystery figure to take out four of the five fathers. This wasn't so convenient at all, and the ICA would eventually uncover the client. After being sent into the wild and effectively being set loose by Dr. Ottmeyer, 47 joined the ICA in 1999. These events were shown in 2016's Hitman, where he was put through rigorous tests by the company, even being set up to fail by Eric Sodders, though thanks to the interventions by Diana Burnwood, he would pass with flying colours, from here fulfilling his destiny and becoming a contract killer for hire. As far as we know from here, Agent 47 was assigned to take out Lee Hong, the first of the four fathers. One by one his biological fathers fell to the unstoppable nature of 47. Unaware of his true relations to the men, 47 made short work of them, before learning the truth. After this he would return to the asylum to confront Ottmeyer. The memories of 47 soon returned to him after he killed an accomplice of Ottmeyer, Dr. Odenkovics, remembering him as the one the needle. This began to unlock the mind of the agent and led him to his final father. This not before fighting through a number of 48 clones. These being made after 47 left on his journey. They were meant to be superior to 47 in every way, but like everyone else, failed. 47 would find and kill Ottmeyer, closing the chapter on this part of his life and after sneaking past the SWAT team assigned to take him down, he escaped asylum for good, and then from here he would enter a whole new world of assassination. Agent 47 would spend years kidding for the ICA, taking on hits one after one, travelling all around the world. He was able to fit in almost like a ghost, thanks to the DNA of the Five Fathers. It didn't matter the country, the role or the situation, 47 could blend in where and how he wanted. He rose to legend status amongst the criminal underworld, before becoming a myth altogether. Though the ICA doesn't have its own motivations at hand, and they simply exist as a go-between for clients and the company alike. Politics, rivalries, agendas are not in their interest. They are in the killing business and they intend to stay as neutral as possible. 
even though at times they've had a healthy relationship with the FBI, CIA, MI6, CSIS, NSA, and even the UN. The ICA remains one of the most connected groups in the world, almost shaping the future. This conglomerate doesn't only offer assassinations, they offer intelligence and other services for the right price. None of these come cheap of course, and ensure that the agency remain well funded by its numerous clients. But once becoming a client, the ICA is extremely hesitant to take one out, though two exceptions have been made before, one on Sergei Zavarok for his possession of WMDs, and the second on Silvio Caruso, thanks to the elusive Shadow Client, which we'll get into a bit later. The relationship between the ICA and Agent 47 has been rocky at times, but this bald harbinger of death eventually comes back into the fold. After 47's past was unlocked back in the asylum, shortly before he finished off his creators for good, something broke in 47 that day, and even though he still remains the best killer for hire, personality and emotions started to leak through this cold, stoic exterior. He wanted out, but just couldn't leave the ICA. So he did what anyone else would do, and faked his own death. 47 could finally leave his past behind and chase down his own destiny. Moving to a Catholic church in the Sicilian countryside, he became a man of faith and was taken in by Father Vittorio. This might be the best attempt at giving a cold-hearted killer some kind of humanity. 47 goes from taking life to creating it by looking after a garden of all things. But this doesn't last forever and his past eventually catches up with him. It was Sergei who tracks down 47 and kidnaps Father Vittorio. This leaves 47 no choice but to get back into the game and rejoin the ICA. From here, here he takes on a number of high important contracts for the ICA in exchange for information on Father Vittorio and his whereabouts. And the ICA and Diana are glad to have their top agent back in the suit. After killing Sergei and finally saving Father Vittorio, he turns down the offer of living a peaceful life once again. 47 understands that the only way he can stay safe is if he remains a hitman. After the events previous in Silent Assassin, contracts followed two years later. This was done because the studio was being pressured to meet corporate deadlines. In turn, contracts essentially became a best hit with old missions getting a new coat of paint from Codename 47. But four years from there, Agent 47 would return in the franchise's most beloved entry yet, Hitman Blood Money. Here plays out the events of Alexander Kane's obsession with the Agent 47. Leading a journalist into the scoop of the century, Alexander regales past contracts of 47 to Rick Henderson. The reporter lured into all this, but eventually like Alexander, is taken out by 47 himself. As the leader of the franchise, it's in Alexander's best interest to take down the ICA and obtain their leading assassin. He is trying to create the perfect clones for himself and needs the bone marrow of 47 to perfect his ones. The franchise was very similar to the ICA. They had connections and assassins everywhere. This was thanks in part to Alexander's past in the FBI as its former director. In 2005, Alexander succeeded in bringing down the ICA from the inside out and was close to having his grasp on 47. But thanks to quick thinking from Diana, not everything went to plan. Though once the ICA was put out of business, Diana had no choice but to work for the franchise and supposedly help kill 47. She poisoned him and he was thought to be dead, but the last surviving members of the ICA had a plan, even though 47 wasn't completely clued in on it. The only way for 47 to get close to Alexander was for him to be dead. Before being cremated at his funeral, Dinah placed his signature ball of pistols on his chest and kissed 47 goodbye. Though no one knew her lips were covered with an antidote that brought him back from the dead and saw the end of Alexander and the franchise for good. This plays out in one of the most awesome sequences in video game history. After the franchise is all but liquidated, once Alexander is killed, the ICA profits skyrocket and they are now firmly in control of the assassination world. Then when they get to the top, the ICA start delving into a cloning program of their own. Because apparently that's the best way to find assassins anymore. Though Diana finds out about these illegal cloning operations and leaks it to the public. After doing so, she goes on the run with Victoria, a girl with a past that mirrors 47's. Diana fears that Victoria will end up having the same future as 47 and doesn't want that for her. During the events of Hitman Absolution, Agent 47 is tasked with a contract on Diana Burnwood. Though he doesn't know what the motivations really are, treating it like any other contract, he picks it up but eventually comes to learn the truth. This of course only after interrogating Diana. After being persuaded by her to help Victoria, 47 does what he does best and eliminates the criminals after Victoria and the people behind the illegal cloning program. Turns out the ICA never knew the extent of what was going on in their own organization. So by the end of Absolution, they bring Diana and 47 back into the fold. For all the good that Hitman 2016 and Hitman 2 have done, the game's narrative on when they take 47 might be the most interesting yet. These are the best playing games of the franchise and Hitman 2 is the complete package that Hitman fans dreamt of. Even if Square Enix went on to get rid of IO Interactive, 
Once again, 47 has taken on a number of hits that seem to be connected. After finding this out, Diner informs 47 that he's been taking out members of the Providence and that a shadow client has been using the ICA all along, pulling the strings in the background all to take down its members. Somehow this keeps happening to the ICA. In the events that follow in Hitman 2, Lucas Gray is revealed to be the shadow client. But not only that, he's a much older assassin. And not only that, but he is a clone from the same asylum as 47 and escaped Otmeyer back in the day. Gray then explains to 47 that they were childhood friends and his escape forced Otmeyer to wipe 47's mind. Though at the end of Hitman 2, there's still one more revelation. After this new super team have their man at the end of the game, it turns out that the parents of Diana were actually killed by 47 in a car bomb. Now Diana was there when her parents died, but never saw 47 hiding in the bushes. As to why he did this hasn't truly been answered yet. Will this finally break up the duo after almost 20 years? 47 seems to know about this assassination as well, but for now he's holding it back. Over the years he's been showing more and more human personality. It would seem as if he's almost having an internal struggle. His affection for a white rabbit at a young age, taking a bird as a pet, and even caring for Victoria and Diana are leading to something major for the character. But for all these answers, we'll have to wait for the inevitable Hitman 3. And that's been Hitman, the dark past of Asian 47 explained. Did you enjoy this deep dive into this bald assassin? And were you surprised by some of the revelations? Let us know down in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you want any other character deep dives, just tweet us at WCultureGaming or tweet me at Ben Roy Turner. And until next time, just try and avoid any bald men with barcode tattoos on the back of their head.